whenever we talk about the strength of enamel or whenever we talk about the tooth care, there is one element that comes to our mind right away. And the name of that element is fluoride. Whether it's related to children's state or whether that's related to grown-up state, fluoride plays a very important role. My name is Swati Man. I'm a dentist and I welcome you all to my channel, which is the Teeth Talk. And my topic of discussion today is the impact or the importance of fluoride on our enamel health. So let's talk about it. We all know that fluoride is an element on the periodic table, at the chemistry periodic table. So I'm sure we know that there is some chemistry involved in that. So let's see what is the structure of enamel. Well, the enamel is an outer shell of your tooth, which provides us protection. The enamel is made out of hydroxyapatite crystals, which makes a shell and prevents the acid attack on our tooth structure. When the hydroxyapatite crystal, they come in contact with the fluoride, the hydroxy of the apatite crystals get replaced with the fluorapatite crystals. And the fluorapatite crystals are much more dense and compact compared to the hydroxyapatite crystals, which means the outer layer of our enamel or the enamel as such as a body gets much more denser and stronger compared to just the hydroxyapatite crystals, which means the strengthening of enamel, which means preventing the decay. And the studies have proven that fluorapatite crystal can prevent the cavity formation by up to 25%. It helps in remineralization of enamel. That means if we see there's a wear and tear of enamel and the outer enamel is getting weaker, fluorapatite crystal can really help in remineralization of that. It reduces the demineralization, which means if we are losing enamel due to any reason because of the diet or because of bruxism or grinding or clenching our teeth, it really helps in making the outer shell stronger. It, and it slows down the demineralization by the, the density of the enamel, which gets stronger. And also, it prevents the acid attack of bacteria on our teeth. And you will be surprised to know that it's not just for the developing teeth. Even the developed teeth of grown-ups can also benefit a lot from fluoride. So now let's talk about the ways our body can get fluoride. Well, the first primary way is through the water fluoridation, where the natural water that we drink, the tap water, has some amount of fluoride in there. But the government runs the water fluoridation scheme under that the artificial fluoride is added to the drinking water, which is supplied to the public, and hence increasing the level of fluoride in the water content. The amount of fluoride, which is absolutely safe to drink, is 0.7 to 1.2 parts per million. So if you're unsure about the fluoride content of the water that you're drinking or the water that's, that's in your tap, you can always contact your local water supplier or your local health department and check the status of fluoride in the water that you're having. Number two, you get fluoride from the food that we eat. The meat, fish, and tea that we drink has some content of fluoride in there. We also benefit from fluoride in the form of a toothpaste. So it's always important to buy the age-appropriate toothpaste, but the toothpaste that we buy over the counter has some content of fluoride in there unless we are using organic or some special brands which are not fluoridated. Another way is through your dentist. So if we see that you have a lot of cavities in your mouth and if you have a very high sugary diet and if you're getting braces done, if you're having some crown and bridge work done and if there is a lot of sensitivity on your teeth because of the wear and tear of enamel, then the fluoride varnish can be applied on the surface as well. It's like a paint-like structure which is applied on the enamel. We leave it alone for approximately 30 minutes and you can repeat the process twice in a year, and that really helps in strengthening the outer layer of enamel. Fluoride toothpaste, fluoridated toothpaste, can also be prescribed if a high content of fluoride is needed, which could be up to four times more compared to an over-the-counter toothpaste. So you can always talk to your dentist because the fluoridated toothpaste are not generally prescribed to children or somebody who is under the age of 16, just to prevent any toxicity because high level of fluoride can also be toxic to our body as well which i'm going to talk in a moment so with the help of a fluoridated toothpaste you can benefit in making your outer enamel harder stronger and you can benefit from that level of fluoridation as well it's always good to speak to your dentist about this matter like anything if consumed in excess has got its risk so does the use of excess amount of fluoride so, for example, if a child from the age of six months to one year is consuming a lot of fluoride, if the fluoride content of the water is in excess, 
if they are given some supplements which are high in fluoride, if the child's formula is mixed with the fluoridated water because most of the formulas already have fluoride and if you're mixing that with the fluoridated water, that means their body is consuming a lot of fluoride. These things can lead to dental fluorosis, which means the eruption of white patches, white streaks or brownish discoloration in severe cases all over the permanent teeth when they come out because excess fluoride can change the signaling of calcium and it also changes the pattern of response of the cells which are responsible for formation of enamel and from the age of six months to seven years is the time when the permanent teeth enamel is growing inside the gums so if they're consuming a lot of fluoride at this age group they tend they have a tendency of formation of dental fluorosis and cosmetically it's not something that's very pleasant to look at also, it can lead to skeletal fluorosis, which means the bones become more brittle because of the excessive consumption of fluoride and that can become more vulnerable to fracture. That means the child may have much more weaker bones compared to the healthy bones. The way to control this is to make sure that for your children, you use age appropriate toothpaste. So do not use uh, any random toothpaste, go for an age appropriate toothpaste. When you use the toothpaste on your child's toothbrush, only use a pea size of it. Do not use the full length of the toothpaste. So don't go for the whole streak. Just go for a pea size. Make sure that you supervise your child when they're brushing their teeth, making sure they fit the toothpaste rather than uh, having any um, issues with swallowing. Do not use any mouthwashes in children under the age of six because many mouthwashes do have fluoride in there as well and the child can end up swallowing of the mouthwash so it's important that you look after any supplements or anything uh, for example any formulas that you use for your children make sure that you have a quick chat with the GP or the doctor or the dentist make sure that you use it in the right way and it's not going to affect the child negatively in the long term so now we know that what is fluoride what does it do to our body it's an ex extensively essential component for the development of enamel but excess of this is not something that we need. So be aware of that. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me uh, the message in the comment section and I will try my best to get back to you as soon as I can. And if you need any prescribed um, fluoride, it's very important that you discuss with your GP about the requirements and talk to your dentist about that. So I thank you all for watching the video and I look forward to meet you in my next video.